400 million years ago, fish crawled onto land and nothing was ever the same. But what if they never did? What if Earth remained a water world where life never touched the shore? In our reality, 400 million years ago, something extraordinary happened. A small group of lobe-finned fish, ancestors of every reptile, bird, and mammal, dragged themselves from water onto land. Their fins became legs, their lungs grew stronger. From that single step, the vast story of terrestrial life began. But in this alternate Earth, that step never comes. The tide retreats, the waves crash, but nothing stirs on shore. The sands remain unmarked, the rocks untouched. Forests may still rise, the great Devonian plants spreading across the continents, weaving blankets of green. But these forests stand in absolute silence. No beetles boring into bark, no dragonflies buzzing between ferns, no birdsong carried on the wind. The air is still, heavy, almost alien, a land of plants without animals. And with no insects to pollinate, forests evolve differently. Plants may rely only on wind and water to scatter their spores. The world above the waves becomes static, green but lifeless, like a vast, endless garden that no creature ever walks. Meanwhile, the oceans keep their monopoly. Here, the story of evolution doesn't slow. It accelerates. Every niche that would have been filled by land animals remains in the sea. The struggle for survival intensifies, pushing ocean life into strange and powerful new forms. Earth becomes a planet where land is nothing but silent stone and forest, and all of life, every drama, every predator, every spark of intelligence belongs to the water. In this alternate Earth, the oceans never surrender their throne. They are not just ecosystems, they are entire worlds, expanding into every role that land life once claimed. Coral reefs grow without limit, stretching for hundreds of miles, vast underwater forests of living stone. Without land herbivores to graze on vegetation, the seas themselves become pastures. Gigantic fish evolve to feed on sprawling fields of seaweed, like underwater cattle, chewing endlessly in schools the size of cities, and predators follow. Sharks, already ancient hunters, expand into forms more terrifying than anything that walks our Earth. Some grow immense, streamlined, as fast as dolphins, but armored in scales like iron. Others develop crushing jaws, able to shatter shells and bones in an instant. The oceans fill with giants, predators the size of whales, yet reptilian, amphibious, or shark-like in form. They dominate not with warmth and speed, as mammals once did, but with raw power, patience, and cold-blooded efficiency. Life here is a never-ending arms race. New defenses emerge, shells thicker, spines sharper, schools larger and more coordinated. Yet with each adaptation, the predators grow more cunning, more specialized, more ruthless. And while on our Earth mammals rose to fill countless roles, grazers, hunters, explorers of every habitat, in this world, it is the fish, the cephalopods, and the great sharks that rule. Creatures of cartilage and scale, tentacles instead of hands, beaks instead of teeth. The seas grow crowded, layered with life, from microscopic plankton drifting in endless clouds to titanic leviathans whose shadows blot out the light. This is the empire of water, where evolution writes its story in waves and currents, not footprints on land. In our world, intelligence on land was fueled by fire, tools, and language. But what about in the sea? Could a thinking mind still rise without ever touching dry ground? The answer may lie with the cephalopods. Even today, octopuses, cuttlefish, and squids display remarkable intelligence, solving puzzles, using camouflage with near-perfect precision, even showing signs of play and curiosity. Given millions of years and an ocean without mammals or reptiles to outcompete them, these creatures could push intelligence far further. Imagine societies of cephalopods weaving cities of coral and stone on the seafloor, 
not with fire, for flame dies in water, but with construction, stacking shells, carving caves, arranging objects with purpose. Communication might flourish, not through speech, but through dazzling displays of color rippling across skin or complex dances of arms and light. Entire conversations held in silence, in bursts of shifting patterns across a living canvas. Tools would look different here. No spears of wood, no metal forged in fire, but shells sharpened into blades, spines wielded as weapons, rocks carefully shaped and carried. Hunting strategies could become communal, coordinated, with groups surrounding prey and in intricate formations like underwater generals commanding armies. Civilizations might spread through currents, linking reef to reef, trench to trench. Culture could be carried in memory, not written on paper, but passed through generations in ritual and mimicry, a living, breathing oral tradition, painted not in words, but in light and movement. And while such beings may never gaze at stars, they might gaze into the abyss, building a world of ideas rivaling our own in complexity, an ocean civilization, invisible from land, yet thriving in the deep. And while the oceans thrum with life, the land above remains silent. Imagine standing at the edge of a great forest. Towering trees sway in the wind. Ferns and moss carpet the earth in endless green. Rivers cut through valleys, pouring into the sea. It looks alive, but listen closely. There is no hum of insects, no buzz of wings, no chorus of frogs at dusk. The silence is absolute. Beaches stretch for thousands of miles marked only by tides. No seabirds circling above, no turtles crawling ashore, no crabs leaving tiny tracks in the sand. Only waves, wind, and stone. Even the skies are empty. No flocks migrating overhead, no predators diving from above. Clouds drift, rain falls, storms rage, yet the air belongs to no living thing. Forests grow, but they are static, unchanging. Without animals to scatter seeds or pollinate flowers, evolution moves slowly, locked in cycles of wind and water. The land becomes an eternal background, beautiful, green, but lifeless. To us, silence can feel peaceful. But on this alternate earth, silence is haunting. It is the silence of a story never told, the story of life that never left the sea. Our world, the one we know, exists because of a single step. A fragile creature pulled itself onto land, and from that moment, the course of history changed forever. Dinosaurs, birds, mammals, and finally, us, all born from that decision written in evolution's code. But here, in this imagined earth, the step never comes. The land remains quiet. The skies remain hollow. All of life's battles, triumphs, and intelligence stay beneath the waves. It is a reminder of how thin the thread of chance truly is, that our existence depends not on inevitability, but on fragile accidents of survival. If fish had never left the sea, there would be no footsteps, no voices, no humanity to dream of what might have been. Only water, only silence, only the endless kingdom of the deep. 